Hey folks, Coach Kev here. Just wanted to walk you through the economic model from the millionaire real estate agent. Uh, this book right here, of course, uh, we've talked about that before. It's a roadmap for how you can take your business and you really succeed at a high level. And the, the, there's really four main models in the book that it talks about. Um, economic model, lead generation model, the budget model, and organization model. Well, um, you basically it's a roadmap on how you can net a million dollars a year. And the first step, of course, is the economic model, understanding what that looks like and you know, ultimately what steps you need to take to, you know, to actually net a million yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through step by step uh, what it would take uh, to hit your goal and net what you want to net. So uh, I talked to a lot of agents that you know that maybe are just getting started or have been in the business a little bit and aren't, aren't necessarily you know seeing the level of success that they want yet. But you know, a hundred thousand dollars seems to be a common number that people want to hit, and it's really quite achievable when you take a look at the numbers and you kind of backtrack into the daily activities you need to do. So let's just start with a hundred thousand dollars and see what it would look like uh, if that's what you want to net. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through step by step in this model, and you know just uh, take a look at all the numbers that um, you know that factor into the equation. So again, you can you know figure out what the numbers look like for you. So uh, obviously, it starts with uh, under, understanding what the, what it is you want to net before taxes. Um, these next two right here uh, fr from the the book it actually talks about setting aside twenty nine point two percent for cost of sales and twenty nine point two percent of your gross commission income for operating expenses. Now, when you're just getting started off, you know, and you're, you, you don't have an assess, assistant, you're, you're kind of doing everything on your own, um, you probably aren't gonna have numbers as high as this, and you could probably get away with a little bit less. Um, cost of sales is anything that's gonna be a cost only when you close a transaction. So for example, if you have a referral fee, you have to pay out. It, unless the transaction closes, you don't pay a referral fee. So that would be an example of cost of sales. Um, it, operating expenses would be, you know, any expenses you have, such as gas, you know, driving buyers around, uh, your cell phone, signs, uh, any marketing you would do, that would all be operating expenses, okay? Now, if you're just getting started, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that you could probably get by with just uh, assuming $40,000. Uh, if you're spending $40,000 over the course of the year uh, and hiring somebody to do your transaction coordinating, paying for all your signs, any marketing you do, that should be a pretty reasonable number to make sure that you net 100,000 at the end, okay? So again, per the model, you'd wanna use 29.2%. In this case, uh, we'll just assume 140,000. Again, 40,000 expenses, and then netting 100,000. Now, the next thing you wanna do is take a look at what's my split between buyers and sellers. Now, uh, depending on, on how long you've been you know, in the business and whether or not you've been tracking your numbers, you may or may not know what that split is. If you're not really sure what it is, I recommend just starting with 50% on each side, and then you know keep keep a uh, track of the numbers going forward, so that you know as you get get rolling, you can see, oh wait, I'm actually 60% sellers and 40% buyers. So then you'll be able to to you know track your numbers a little better and figure out where you need to be. So once you know what that uh, that percentage is of buyers and sellers, then we're gonna of course you know, take the 50% times whatever the gross commission income is here. In this case, we're gonna be $70,000 on either side. So 70,000 revenue from buyers and 70,000 revenue from sellers, okay? Now next is commission. Um, you know, de depending on who you are and what you charge, I mean, this could vary quite uh, substantially. I know some agents, they offer uh, discounts on their commission for various things. You know, maybe if you sell with me, then I'll give you a discount when you buy, or if you, uh, our, our past, uh, or if you're military, um, then we'll give you a, a discount there. And some just offer, you know, a smaller commission to start with. So depending on what you offer, you want to enter that here. Um, some offer, you know, uh, more discounts on the buy side versus sell. So again, you know, figure out what, um, you know, what yours is, is going to be and then enter that here. But then again, track uh, each deal you have so that you can enter, you know, exact numbers here, you know, um, based on what you actually do, and that'll help you make sure that the numbers in the end for how many appointments you have to attend make sense, okay? So for just for argument's sake right now, we're gonna say 3%, okay? Uh, so if you take your gross commission income from each side and divide by that commission, that's gonna give you your seller sold volume, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be 2,333,000 uh, in seller volume, and the same thing for buyer volume, okay? 
Now, next step, of course, is average sales price. That's going to vary depending on the agent and also depending on the area you're working. Obviously, Davis County is higher than Weber County as a general rule. Um, just for argument's sake, we're going to go ahead and say 240000 um, Again, enter whatever number it is that you have. And again, you're probably, once you start tracking your numbers, you're probably going to notice that you do have a different number for sellers versus buyers. So again, as you track it, we'll, this, this will get more accurate and you can fine tune it as the months and years go by. Um, once you take, you, you got the seller sold volume and you divide, um, you're going to see that, uh, I mean, just, just for easy math, this is roughly 2.4 million and 240,000 average sales price. So that's, that's going to be 10 sales uh, on the seller side and 10 on the buyer side. Okay. So basically, um, you know, what we're looking at right now is okay to, to net a hundred thousand dollars with $40,000 expenses. Basically all, all I'm going to need to do is 10 sellers and, tell, and 10 buyers in the year. Okay. So now we got to take a look at, okay, so, so what are we going to have to do to get to those 10 sellers and 10 buyers? Now, these conversion rates right here are straight out of the, the millionaire real estate agent book. So uh, on average for sellers, you know, in, in you know, all markets, it's 65% of, of listings sell, 80% of buyers where you get an agency agreement uh, actually wind up buying. Um, in this market, it's a pretty strong seller's market. So, you know, I think it's fair to say that you could take this 65% and bump that up. Um, you know, in this market, you know, I'd say probably 90% of, of listings, you know, is, is, a, is a pretty reasonable number to expect. Now on the uh, buyer side, you also might say, well, you know, this is a, a, a strong seller's market. So we have a lot of, you know, buyers that are, you know, um, you know, getting outbid and multiple offers. So maybe you want to bump this down a little bit from 80% to 75%. But again, over the long term, you want to track what your actual numbers are so you can use these to figure out again, how many listings you need and ultimately how many appointments you need, okay? Once we take this, um, uh, the 90% conversion rate, we, we take the 10 uh, sellers sold and divide by the 90, that's gonna give us the total number of listings that we're gonna need to take over the year, okay? So that's gonna be 11. And the buyer, uh, if you've got a, a, a lower conversion rate here, that's gonna be 13, okay? Um, now again, these conversion rates, these are the rates um, for uh, getting the listing uh, versus getting the buyer. Okay, um, you know, again, these are straight from the book. You'd want to take a look at what your uh, numbers are. Um, you know, in this market, again, uh, it's you know a very strong seller's market. Ordinarily, it's eighty percent, but if you're just getting started, or maybe you haven't haven't uh, you know seen the you know been in the business a long time and seen the success that you're expecting, um, just to be conservative, you may want to bump this down. Let's let's just just for argument's sake, let's say that you only get sixty percent of the listings. That you uh, you know when you go out an appointment, sixty percent of the time you actually take the listing. Um, you know, again, the the industry average, um, you know, for people that have, have been in the business and um, and have the experience, is eighty percent. So if you if you put sixty here, that's going to be pretty conservative. Um, on the buyer side, um, you know, it's a lot of times it's easier to get a buyer to um, you know to work with you than than a seller. Um, it doesn't, um, you know, you aren't trying to have to sell them on paying you a commission, that kind of thing. So uh, I actually like to raise this up from 60% to 80%. If you got a good buyer presentation, uh, then that's a very achie achievable number for getting a buyer agency agreement signed. As a matter of fact, on our team, we've, we've got a higher uh, rate than that for, uh, you know, conversion from the appointment to the actual agency agreement sign. Uh, when you take these numbers and you divide them, then, um, you know, 11 listings divided by the 60%. That's going to tell you how many appointments you actually have to go on. So on the seller side, we're looking at 18. On the buyer side, we're looking at 13. I'm sorry, 17. Um, so looking at that, that's 35 appointments in a year. So if you divide that by 12, you know, then you're just looking at you know roughly 1.5 per month seller listing appointments. And then on the buy side, you know, slightly different, but again, just roughly it's 1.5. So one and a half appointments per month is all you need to go on, you know, to hit that number. Now, again, you know, as you look at these numbers, you know, if your numbers are different, let's say you've got a higher average sales price. Well, that number is going to even go down from there. So um, when I talk to most people about this and they, they look at this and say, wow, you know, three appointments per month, that's not that much. Um, that seems very achievable. And yet most people don't do it. And so the question is, why not? So, um, you know, but, but it starts with understanding how many, you know, appointments do I need to go on per month 
and then and then you can basically take a look at the activities that I need to do to make sure that I get those appointments. If you got any questions on this, just let me know, and uh, you can reach me at uh, coach at kevrichter.com, and uh, you know feel free to email me any questions you have, and I'd be happy to answer those. If you are interested in figuring out what are the next steps that I need to do and putting together a plan for how do I take, you know, now that I know what the economic model is and what the number of appointments is, how do I take that to the next level and turn it into something I can execute, then we're actually going to be having a, um, a mastermind called Rocket Fuel for Real Estate where we're going to cover specifically what, you, what it is you need to do to make sure that you hit those numbers and make sure that you're you know, on your way to netting that $100,000 or whatever that, that net is for you. So hope to see you there.